In this video, we're going to start taking a look at entropy. Entropy. And more specifically, the kind of entropy we are going to be interested in is information entropy. Information entropy. As opposed to another kind of entropy which you may have heard of, probably heard of, thermodynamic entropy. Uh, information entropy comes up in the context of information theory. Uh, there is actually a direct connection with thermodynamic entropy, but we're not going to address that here. So what is entropy? What is information entropy? Well, you can think about it uh, sort of intuitively as the uh, uncertainty uncertainty, put that in quotes since we don't really have a definition for uncertainty, but you can think about it as the uncertainty in a random variable or random quantity, or equivalently you can think about it as the information you would obtain by learning the value of some unknown random variable or quantity. So it's the information you would gain. Now, why do we care about entropy? Well, it's fundamental. It's the fundamental quantity in information theory. Everything seems to come back to this uh, main central concept of entropy. And even if you're not really interested in information theory, more generally, if you're interested in mathematically modeling the world using probability and statistics like, like I am, uh, then entropy is, it's, it's really an indispensable tool to have in your sort of mental toolbox to think about these concepts which might otherwise be fuzzily defined, information, uncertainty, and give them a real rigorous mathematical basis. So we're going to, in a little bit, start looking at some uh, intuitive examples for why entropy is a good way to think about these things. But before that, let me equip you with the definition. Definition of entropy. We're going to be considering random variable x. So let x be a random variable. And x is going to be, we're only going to be considering discrete random variables, x. And x takes values in some set, script x, and is distributed according to some probability distribution, p, over that set. So for example, let me give you just a, to illustrate, e.g., script x may be you know, the set of numbers from 1 to uh, 10, or it may be, say, the natural numbers. Uh, but it's not going to be a set like the real numbers. That is not going to be the case because that's not a countable set. It's an uncountable set, if you're familiar with concepts of countability and uncountability. Uh, and a discrete random variable, by definition, takes values in a countable set. So a better name might actually be countable random variable, but this is a sort of standard terminology, discrete. And what, well, what is, the, what is the definition? So let's finish it here. X is a discrete random variable, and the entropy of X is denoted by capital H of X, and it is the quantity minus the sum over all elements, little x, in script x, our set, of the probability of the element times the log of the probability. So that is the entropy. So just take a moment to look at that and take that in.
Now I'm going to make a couple remarks about this definition, clarify some things maybe. Remarks. First remark. I wrote log here uh, and maybe I should have said what kind of log this is. Uh, usually when mathematicians write log they mean the natural log but uh, which engineers might write you know ln ln for the natural log or you know maybe log base e but in fact uh, we're going to be using the base 2 log almost almost all the time in information theory you're looking at the base 2 logs and so here uh, when I write log I mean the base 2 log if I don't, if I'm not going to use the base two log, then I will specifically write the base as a subscript. So, for example, if the base is b, then we would write log base b, and then the entropy defined using the base b log we would denote by h sub b of x. So B might be the E, or it might be you know three, or some some other crazy base. And uh, it doesn't, but it doesn't really actually matter too much what base we choose to use for the entropy, because if you're familiar with logs, or, or you know you can do a little calculation to convince yourself that really we can just by multiplying by a constant factor we can change the base b log into any other base or you know we can change the base 2 log to the base e log multiply by a factor and uh, essentially it amounts to a change of units for our entropy so unit well wait what are units the what are the units of entropy well for the base 2 log the units are bits they're called bits that's just some terminology and there's a really good reason why they're called bits, actually, which we will get to. So this is remark one. Oh, and one other thing regarding the logs. There's no reason why, you know, of course, you know, there could be some element x for which p of x is zero. You know, it's perfectly valid to put zero probability on something. And then log of zero would be minus infinity. And then we would have zero times minus infinity and that is undefined so that's potentially a problem but we will resolve this apparent paradox by defining zero log zero colon equals for define that to be zero and that will resolve the paradox why is this I mean why is this a reasonable thing I can always sort of define it but why is this a reasonable definition? Well, you can do a little calculus and convince yourself that the function x log x converges to 0 as x converges to 0 from above. So as x goes, so, you know, if you look at, remember what log looks like. I draw a little graph of log. So it crosses at 1, you know, this is 0, this is your x-axis, and uh, so log is going, shooting off to minus infinity here, but if we multiply it by x, then it, well, it ends up coming back up to 0. Okay, that's remark 1. Let me give you a, an example to make this concrete in your in your mind what exactly we're talking about. So here's an example. Let's say that x, our random variable, takes values in the set 1, 2, 3. So in other words, uh, script x is just this little set of three elements. It doesn't really matter what the elements are. What matters is the probabilities. So p, we're going to take the probability that x is 1 to be 1 half. Probability that x is 2 is 
say one quarter and one quarter for the probability that x is three. So we you know we have this little random variable. Let's plug it in, see what the entropy is. So the entropy of x of this x is going to be well it's, we're summing over script x and it has script x has three elements. We've got three terms. The first term is minus a half log one half minus one quarter log one quarter minus one quarter log one quarter. And since we're using the base two log, remember, then these calculations become nice and easy. So just a quick aside, you know, if you remember your logs and minus log one half is just log two and the base two log of two is one. And similarly we can do log of one quarter, that's going to be log of four, and four is uh, two times two, so log of two times two is two times log of two, two log two, and uh, so this is just two. So let's plug these in here, see what we get. So this is just going to be, so we plug that in, the minus goes with that, so we get one half minus log, so we get plus one half plus one half. Oh, and of course that is equal to three halves. Just a nice simple example there for you to think about. Concrete example. So let me make one more brief remark. Time for one more thing. Now the probability p of x is always between 0 and 1, right? It's a probability, so it's got to be between 0 and 1. And that means the log of that probability, remember if you look at this graph, probability is between 0 and 1, the log is going to be less or equal to 0. And then uh, this negative is going to cancel, that makes it greater or equal to 0. So we're summing up a bunch of non-negative things, and that means that the entropy is always going to be non-negative, always, for discrete random variables. So that is important to remember. Entropy is non-negative. Okay, let's stop there for this video and next video we're going to start looking at some more examples to give you some intuition for why the entropy is a good measure of uncertainty and information.